What's going on guys? Welcome back to YouTube Unsolved. This is the season finale of the first season of YouTube Unsolved. So it's been already one whole season, 10 entire episodes of this series of uncovering YouTube's greatest mysteries, greatest unsolved problems and questions that we've all wondered since the beginning of time. Or at least the beginning of this website, which is pretty much the beginning of time. So in this season finale, we're going to go over all of the basics, all of the details of every single one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of YouTube to date. And we're going to basically be summarizing all of the mysteries that we've covered in this series so far and explaining the solved mysteries and the still unsolved mysteries. My name is Dallas, aka Inferness. And also, this is the Tekka Realm 2. And by the way, this video was made possible by a little thing that I'm sure that you've heard of at this point called NordVPN. VPNs are very essential utilities that you need to use in order to keep yourself safe online. Because when you're online, well, it's not a safe place. You could have your information vulnerable to all kinds of different things. But NordVPN offers you a very powerful protection service which allows you to be able to browse the internet online all you want without having any problems whatsoever. And you'll also be safe. You can go to the website and you can download it using the link that's in the description. And also, once you're there, you can sign up for an account and you, there's different account levels that you can purchase to get even more options. You can see in the software itself, there's a whole bunch of countries that you can click on and you can use to mask your IP address to basically like pretend that you're in a whole different country. And it's really simple. This way, you have a whole built-in firewall in your computer and you don't have to worry about anyone being able to track your own personal information while you're using the internet, and especially while you're watching this video on YouTube. There's already so many scary things on YouTube and on the internet, you don't want to be vulnerable to it. So make sure you check that out. And with all that being said, let's get straight back into the season finale. So we're basically Scooby-Dooing our way through all of the mysteries here on this website. The first one is of course the legendary username 666. Back in 2008, that really mystical year, there was a video uploaded to YouTube called Username 666. Now this video was the original Username 666, which is no longer available. There's a re-uploaded version that is still available, and we covered this fact in the video itself, but the contents of this video was rather disturbing to every single person who watched it. From what you probably know from watching it yourself, it contained a visualization of going to a URL called 666, where a normal channel's URL would be, and then refreshing the page multiple times on an unusually fast Internet Explorer tab, loading eventually this very corrupted, very weird, satanic, looking version of YouTube, perhaps even cursing the very person doing it and making them never to be seen again, only for this video to be re-uploaded by another strange YouTube channel, which does all kinds of other strange art projects to date as well, that look like they belong straight on the deep web. And of course, there's always more to it than just that. There's an actual channel which was deleted. It wasn't just straight up faked. There was a channel called username 666, which is no longer available, and you can even still go to it today. If you go to youtube.com slash 666, there used to be a creepy little message that would pop up saying, this channel has been deleted for violating the terms of service. Now it just comes up with a more boring and bland, this page doesn't exist. But since we found out through the means of 4chan that this channel was actually in existence, and it wasn't just completely fabricated for some creepypasta purpose, we know that this channel existed before the video called Username666 was uploaded by this other channel. So, we came to the conclusion that this original channel 666 was made by the owner of this channel which re-uploaded the video called Nana something numbers rather. So what that means is this person's channel which was originally a most likely very edgy deep web type art project which was being uploaded for YouTube even though it was back in the wild west days of 2008 versions of YouTube it was still too much. YouTube could not handle it so they took it down and this video was uploaded in spite of that to basically get back at YouTube by pranking the entire website itself in return for their channel being deleted because I guess the videos they were uploading were just way too edgy. And they continued uploading more edgy art projects which were most likely not as edgy, not as weird because they were able to be not deleted over time and they're still able to be watched even today. And that brings us straight into the next one. You know what it is, say it with me, it rolls off the tongue. Marina Mortigarve 
Glasgow. Once again in 2008, a very simple, short video was uploaded to YouTube by an unknown user because there is no snapshot of the original channel that uploaded this video. And, supposedly, due to all of the records from all the people who recounted seeing the video, which has been posted all across the internet on different forum websites, every person who watched this video decided to claw their own eyes out and send them in a one-day shipping Amazon delivery package to YouTube's headquarters. We obviously realized that this was faked and it was clearly a satirical joking creepypasta one of the first creepypastas ever created on YouTube now this video was instantly debunked and the strangest thing is the person who is in this original clip which was a very distorted demented type of video which was supposedly supposed to make you feel like you wanted to just die inside well this was a random person who didn't even give permission to whoever made the original to be posted in there. And this person has their own Facebook page and their whatever social media profile that they still use, and they're just a random person going about their daily life, not even realizing most likely that they are involved or they are the main subject in one of the oldest and longest creepypastas known to YouTube. So this mystery was never really unsolved, and it wasn't really solved either because it was just a creepypasta the whole time. But speaking about solved and unsolved mysteries we're going to the unsolved side now now we have the mystery of the deeper youtube channel now this was more complex so we're going to simplify it here in this video because it goes far far deeper than you could possibly imagine that's why it's called that name and not any other very strange nsfw reason um so this was basically supposedly an internet arg which was a murder mystery themed puzzle which many people partook in to try to find the answer to and get the reward which the award was unknown because the maker of the arc died in the middle of making it but that's not it because to date we actually covered this right when there was more information given because only recently on a separate channel that was clearly still in connection to this original deeper channel because it was the same title the same name and it was connected via the channel section of the deeper channel as well a new video which was just like all the other ones in the past was uploaded with a random number generated title random thumbnail and in the video itself was some other raw caught footage which it seemed like it came straight out of a 90s camera which indicated that after all this time either the person doing the arg didn't die and that was all just to mistrace everyone from finding the actual answer because maybe it wasn't an arg the whole time it was actually a legitimate murder and people were just simply getting way too close to trying to find the actual answer so the person just decided to divert everyone that way and start up a whole nother mystery because to this day more videos are still being uploaded to this channel right after this person who made the original channel supposedly died so that's the strangest unsolved mystery which could have real world implications considering it's involving real life murder cases so yeah by far the most unsettling one up to this date now transitioning to a more family friendly type of mystery we have the web driver torso mystery web driver torso is a youtube channel which was made by google in order to test the quality of YouTube every single one minute or so, every single day, about 500,000 straight times. Now, it seems pretty innocuous and not really too much anything to it, but you would be fooled because there is a whole lot more to it. Now, this particular mystery of YouTube Unsolved just happens to be a little bit more on the satirical side because everything that I theorize just happens to be completely uh, random and not really substantiated by any actual evidence except for everything. It's all just a big game theory, but the whole thing about this mystery is who was running the web driver torso channel the entire time? Who has the time to be able to upload a video once every single couple of minutes, every single day for multiple years? Well, all we had to do was plug in the numbers of this entire thing. The amount of videos, the amount of time in between videos, the length of videos, the amount of total scenes in each video. We're talking about each slide with different squares on them, adding them all up. And we came to estimates that lined up exactly with other particular details of Rick Astley's music video, I'm Never gonna give you up. Aside from there just being a couple videos that were clearly meant to be a tribute to it that were in the most popular section of the channel, it seems like the whole channel was actually made as some kind of reference to the never gonna give you up music video itself, which we came to the conclusion of, obviously, comedically, not really fully in serious light, this. that it was being run by none other than Rick Astley. The whole channel was just a Rickroll, it was never started by Google. It was all just one big joke, and all one big publicity stunt for Rick Astley himself. 
which makes sense, although in my opinion, I'd say it's probably 30% not likely. It's probably about 70% not the case, because the logistics of Rick Astley actually doing this instead of just doing a normal thing and paying for ads or whatever is probably very unlikely. But either way, it was a very interesting thing to cover. In April of 2005, a video was uploaded called Me at the Zoo by a name known as Jawed, Jawed. Giad, Jawed, whatever you want to pronounce it. I can't say it a single way without getting criticism in the comments, so I'm going to leave that to you. This video was the first ever video uploaded by a person on YouTube, not the first ever video, because in this installment of YouTube Unsolved, we figured out that there was actually a video uploaded before. And this video was called Comtest. And there was five videos called Comtest. Comtest 1 all the way through 5, each having varying thumbnails of random stock images and some even just having a normal color pattern. But the original one, which we actually ended up finding, and which I made in the most recent video, which is right here, this video is the very first video on YouTube. Just a sequence of pinging sounds along with just a single test pattern to presumably just test the capability of YouTube being able to host videos in general. Kind of like a web driver torso except only five videos instead of 500,000, and pretty much they were deleted within the single day that they were put on YouTube. The only documented evidence is from a snapshot of a snapshot of Wayback Machine. That's right, not just Wayback Machine, not just a normal snapshot of Wayback Machine, but a snapshot of a snapshot. So basically, someone went to Wayback Machine, typed in YouTube's URL into the search bar, took the URL of those results in Wayback Machine, put that URL in the search bar of another Wayback Machine page, and clicked search and realized that there was further back examples that existed way back in 2005 that were no longer visible today for whatever reason. Maybe because Wayback Machine gets rid of certain snapshots of web pages after a certain amount of time because they're running out of hard drive space, perhaps? These snapshots only existed for one single day. And it just so happened that someone, way back on YouTube, decided to re-upload this certain video called Comtest 1 or Comtest 2 to Vimeo instead of just YouTube, since Vimeo is actually older than YouTube itself. That's the only way that we were able to recover this video right here which is still viewable to this very day, a whole month before Me at the Zoo was even published. So that was the very first breath YouTube took in existence. Not exactly what you would expect to be a grand beginning to such a large website, but regardless, it is the reality. Now we're getting back to the really messed up side of things, and we're talking about literal curses. Now, this whole thing could have just been one big, uh, just make-believe story made up by a whole bunch of people who were just in on it, who decided to make a whole 4chan thread pretending like everything that happened happened to them, but I really don't think that that's likely because, well, that would require an incredible amount of coordination considering this took place all the way back in 2008 going on 2009, I don't think that was what people's most popular pastime was to do during that period because, well, they had no real expectation of being seen by anyone else. It's not like this whole story was written on a creepypasta website or any other forum. This is actually a snapshot of a 4chan post that took place over 12 years ago. This 4chan post originated with one single commenter who recollected on a single YouTube comment that they found which after reading it, everything in their life just started going wrong. Like, every single thing started getting progressively more dangerous, more scary, starting from the fact that their ceiling fan just fell and almost killed them, to the point where they're actually getting into car accidents and car crashes, along with the fact of their parents separating in a divorce as well, only a week after reading the comment. And then, if that wasn't good enough, lots of people who were replying in the 4chan forum actually started sharing their own experiences of their own misfortunes after reading the comment and having a whole personal email being sent to them with the comment and the gibberish that made it up. It was literally as if someone had just slapped their hands on a keyboard like that gif you would see on iFunny or something like that, but literally, it turned out to be an actual curse which literally ruined everyone's life. And this comment is nowhere to be found anywhere. You can search up the name and there's no information on this person or any other person that has this name anywhere else on YouTube. And this mystery has such little information about it compared to all the other ones that it's pretty much the most unsolved and yet the most captivating mystery 
in YouTube Unsolved. And now, a very special Unsolved mystery that we covered just recently. A very long lost forgotten YouTube award that only 400 people in history received. Basically, this was like the golden apple of all of YouTube awards. If you received it, you were just way too overpowered for your time. Now, because so many people didn't get it who deserved to have it, there were so many just lying around at the YouTube headquarters or wherever else they store YouTube awards in some warehouse somewhere being made in China. They happened to ship me one just to review it because they were no longer in service and they're no longer giving them to any people. It would come in a box like this, and you would receive it if you got 10 million views on a single video. You'd only receive it one time though, and basically, well, it looks kinda like a normal shiny glass plaque, which has the YouTube logo on it and everything else. Only 400 people got this because YouTube realized that the award concept for rewarding people for getting 10 million views on a video wasn't that good of an idea since a lot of people getting 10 million views were not people who took YouTube seriously, and that they were going to probably just sell them and uh, make money off of it in general. Also, the fact that there was no website to actually redeem these awards. They were just straight up shipped to wherever the address was that was linked to the person's Gmail account associated with their YouTube channel, and that was leading to a whole lot of confusions and mess-ups as well. So, in 2015, they just basically had enough of it, and they ended the whole thing after only sending 400. Sealing the deal with the final YouTube mystery. Basically, this has been the most epic YouTube Unsolved Mysteries we've covered so far, and there's still a whole lot more left to go. If you think that we're even close to being done, covering all of the unbelievably strange and unsettling, skin-crawling, weird things on this platform, you're nowhere near correct, because this is just the beginning. We're starting Season 2 of YouTube Unsolved next year in 2021, and I'd just like to say thank you so much for sticking around with this series. This is by far the most popular individual series on my channel, and my channel's history as well, and I'm obviously just a straight-up detective at this point, along with you, since you people are now doing most of the work finding these things for me, and I'd like to thank you so much for that. And now, after all that, I'd like to say, this is to YouTube Unsolved Season 2. I'll see you there. Goodbye.